Open your Bibles to Colossians 1.27. Sid mentioned this verse last night. It's not in my teaching part, but that's okay. We're going to hit it anyway. Because I don't follow a lot of rules. <laughs> Colossians 1.27. You there? Colossians 1.27. I tricked you, didn't I? You didn't know where to go. Everybody was at 2 Timothy. That's okay. Colossians 1.27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Christ in you. Okay, everybody say it. Christ in you. The hope of glory. So what does that have to do with the purpose of the ages? Well, kind of everything. Turn to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 1, verse 9. You know, when you're putting together the teachings, you don't always use the Bible that you're going to teach with. So <laughs> let's find it. 2 Timothy 1, 9. Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Before the world began. I've got it printed on the page 2, 2 Timothy 1, 7 through 10. Let's read it on the working translations on your second page. Verse 7 says, Moreover, God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but of power and of love and of sober thinking. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the witness of our Lord, nor me, his prisoner, but share with me in suffering hardships for the gospel according to the power of God, the power of God who saved us delivered us and called us with a holy, a sanctified calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the time of the ages. Those things were manifested in the present time by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who makes death inactive and brings life and incorruptibility to light through the gospel. Isn't that awesome? This is through the ages. This was whose plan? God's plan. Not man's plan. Man would have goofed it up. But this was God's plan. Let's go to Genesis. We're going to start through the ages. We're going to go through the history a little bit, the Old Testament history. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We, I think we all know that one. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. What's the image of God? Spirit. Spirit. Says so in John 4, 24. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. He wanted that companionship. He wanted to be their God. He wanted a people. So he created them with spirit within so that they could talk to him. You know, the, the, the spirit upon. And then Adam and Eve blew it. And... But right after they blew it, God set up a plan of redemption. He wanted his people. We're going to through the turn to Leviticus. Leviticus does not have 36 chapters. I goofed up. It's Leviticus 26. <clears throat> through the ages, God had relationships with different men. <clears throat> Before the Old Testament law was set up, there were men that had, had spirit upon them, and they could commune with God, but it was always conditional, you know. We're not going to go through them all, but you can look back at Noah and at Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, all these men God could talk to, and they talked with God. Then there was the time of the law. The law was given to bring righteousness to God's chosen people so that they might have that relationship with God. Unfortunately, Israel did not fulfill the obligations of the law. 
and thus they had many problems. But let's look at Leviticus 26, I'm not even there, and verse 12. And this was God's heart for his people. And I will walk among you and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. That's what God wanted. He wanted to walk among them. He wanted to be their God. He wanted them to be his people. We're going to take a minute and read Leviticus 1 through 12, just to kind of get a running start on what's going on here. Ye shall make no idols nor graven images, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down to unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, and then here's the promises, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and you shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely, and I will give you peace. In the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. Isn't that something we have to deal with every day? It's something making us afraid. This is what God promised the children of Israel. They were still in the wilderness. They hadn't gone in the promised land yet. But this is what if you if you come to me, if you look to me. Where was I? Six. Um, and I will give you peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword, for I have respect unto you. And make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. And you shall eat old store, and bring forth the old because of the new. I will set forth, I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their bondsmen, and I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you upright. This is what God's promise. And if you keep reading on in this chapter, it tells you what will happen if they don't keep his commandments. But we're not going to go there. Uh, let's look at Jeremiah 32. Through the ages, that was as the law was being given, when the law was given, when Moses was telling them this, in Jeremiah, <coughs> Judah is um, on the verge or gone into Babylonian captivity. Israel's already gone into captivity. And these are some promises of God. Jeremiah 32. 32, and verse 38. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. We're going to back up just a little before this, too, to kind of get a running start. Verse 36. And now, therefore, thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this city, whereof ye say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword, and of the, by the famine, and by the pestilence. Behold... I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. That's what God wants. Turn back a page, Jeremiah 31, 31, not 32, 31, another typo I made. Still same time period. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. You know, it's not going to be that covenant because they couldn't fulfill it. They broke it. They couldn't keep up with it. Which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. He wanted to take care of them. He did take care of them. Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant 
that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. God wants his people to come to him. He wants to be their God. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor saying, every more his neighbor and every man his brother saying, no more, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sins. That's a promise of God. <clears throat> okay, let's go to Jeremiah 24. Am I coming through you? No. Jeremiah 24, verse 7. This is just through the time of Jeremiah that people are going into captivity. There's destruction all around them. And, you know, Jeremiah knows that this is, they're going to be taken into captivity. He's given the words that God gives him to tell the people to find them. Jeremiah 24, 7. And I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with all their whole heart. Okay. All right. That, you know, God wanted to see them, and he wanted to be their God. Ezekiel. Next book over. Or, well, not exactly the next book, but it, Jeremiah Lamentations, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 11. <clears throat> this is all a little redundant, but I just wanted to show you that God wanted his people. He would do things to bring them back to him. He wanted to be their God. He wanted to be unto them a husbandman. He wanted to take care of them. Ezekiel 11 and verse 20. Oh, let's go to 19. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them and they shall be my people and I will be their God. Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37, 27. Again, my tabernacle also shall be with you, them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. God wanted his people. Hosea. Ezekiel. Daniel. Hosea. Hosea 2. This is the history that I like to read, the Old Testament history. Hosea 2, 23. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. Before this time, God had a set people. It was Israel, and then they broke the covenants. But he's talking about a day coming when those people who were not his people shall be his people. Let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah is two books before Matthew. Is that cheating? Zechariah 8. <laughs> Zechariah is, was a prophet during the, after the 70 years of Judah being in captivity in Babylon. And this is them coming back from um, captivity. And... <clears throat> I really wanted to read. Well, verse 8 says, Then cried he upon me and spake unto me, saying, Behold those, these that go toward the north, the country. That's not it. That's 6. Sorry. <clears throat> verse, chapter 8, verse 8. And I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. This is the, the captivity coming back from Babylon into Jerusalem. And let's, let's read this chapter a little bit. Let's go up to verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts 
Dun, da, da. The Lord of hosts came to me saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her in a great fury. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned into Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, There shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. There had been, I mean, Jerusalem had been destroyed completely when Babylon came in. And every man with his staff in his hand for the very age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if, if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of the people in these days, should it be also be marvelous in my eyes with the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west. I will bring them and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and they shall be my people and I will be their God in truth. And in righteousness. This is what God's heart through the ages has been. He wanted to be their God and He wanted them to be His people. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 6. Verse 16. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, though we have known Christ after the flesh. Yet now, henceforth, we know him no more. That's not the right verse, Andrea. 616. That was a good verse. <laughs> this is not right either. 2 Corinthians 6, 16. Is that it? Okay. By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit. Pure. 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 No. Okay. Second Corinthians six sixteen. Oh well. Let's go. I don't see it. Go to Ephesians two. <laughs> Sorry. I wanted to get to Ephesians anyway. <laughs> There's just so much there. I, in, in teachings of our fellowship, I've always stayed away from the teachings of the mystery because it's just such an awesome subject. It's just such a dynamic thing. It's so incredibly important to our lives. So anyway, this is not what God wanted. Ephesians 2. And you who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom we also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You know, this is not what God wanted for us through the ages. This is not what he had planned. But let's look at Ephesians 1. My husband was supposed to teach Ephesians 1, and then I was just going to lead into it, and he just can't do it. So anyway, we're going to start in Ephesians 1. We're going to start in verse 3. And um, I do have it printed in the working translation. No, I don't. Never mind. I have chapter 3. But, uh, let's just start in verse 9 then. <clears throat> verse 9. In the King James it says, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to the good pleasure which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of whose will? His own will. This is God's will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Let's read it in the working translation on your sheet. Verse 9, Ephesians 1, 9 says... He has made known unto us the mystery of his will in accordance with the good pleasure 
which him, he himself purposed in him. God purposed this so that in the administration of the fullness of times he might bring all things together under one head in Christ, that is, the thing in heaven and the things upon the earth in him, the Christ, in him, the Christ, we were also chosen, which was determined beforehand in accordance with the purpose of him who works all things according to the deliberation of his own will. I don't know why God chose me. You know, I, I know my faults, but God wants us. Who, who was asking me, you know, Uncle Sam used to have the poster, I want you, God wants you. He wants us. It's his will. It's the determination and the deliberation of his own will. Verse 12, that we who previously hoped in Christ should be under the praise of his glory in him, the Christ, who you also after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the gospel of your deliverance, having also believed in him, were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest. It's the token of our inheritance until the redemption of the acquisition under the praise of his glory. I'm not going to read the footnote, but it, it's very apropos. I encourage you guys to read the footnote. But let's go to Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, 1, and I'm just going to read it from the working translation here because there's some things in the King James that just make it confusing, but I think in Walter Cummings' work, he did a great job of not only the pronouns, but a lot of people get caught up on the predestinated. Oh, well, I wasn't predestinated to be a Christian. That's, that's not really what this is. God's will is that we all come to a knowledge of him, to all come, to be his people, so he will be our God. Ephesians 3, 1. For this reason I, Paul, am the prisoner of Christ on behalf of you, the Gentiles. If, in fact, you have heard about the administration of the grace of God that was given to me for you, namely, that by revelation, the mystery was made known to me, even as I briefly wrote previously. Verse 4 then you are able by reading to grasp my understanding in the mystery pertaining to Christ. In other generations, it was not made known to the sons of men. You know, God kept it, kept it a secret. It was not made known to even the, the highest prophets, you know, what, whoever you want to think of, Elijah, Elisha, uh, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah. This was not made known unto them as it is now been revealed to his holy, his sanctified apostles and prophets. How? By the Spirit. Namely, that the Gentiles should be joint heirs and joint members of the same body and joint partakers of the promise. What was promised in Christ Jesus by the gospel? I don't think I have an ounce of Jewish blood in my running through my veins. So if this had not happened, I would not have a chance. But God made it possible for the Jews and Gentiles to be of the same body and brought to God, brought, redeemed by him. Verse 7, of this mystery I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God that was given to me according to the working of his power to me who am less than the least of all holy or sanctified ones was this grace given to proclaim the gospel regarding the untraceable, it wasn't traceable through the word, riches of Christ to the Gentiles and to enlighten all people regarding what is the administration of the mystery which has been hidden from ages in God who created all things. Verse 10, so that through the church, the multifarious wisdom of God, the multifarious wisdom of God. In Corinthians, it talks about the, the wisdom of men is, doesn't even come up with the dumbness of God. That's not the right word. But anyway, um, the, but the multifarious wisdom of God could now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realm in accordance with the purpose of the ages, which he accomplished God accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him we have boldness and access to the Father, to the God, to the creator of the heavens and the earth with confidence through the right way of believing in him. 
I want to close in Ephesians, if he, uh, not Ephesians, in 1 John. Again, I'm varying from the uh, syllabus. 1 John 3. 1 John 3. And verse 2. This is so important. The purpose through the ages. Christ has accomplished our redemption. 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Right now. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We don't know what's coming. We can only know what we can read through the scriptures. But just like Christ was, the, the mystery was held in secret, I'm sure there's other things that God hadn't told everybody. But right now, right now we're the sons of God. We've got that access to God. We can go to the heavenly father, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is a personal private God to us, and we can teach others how to get born again, how to get that eternal life. Beloved, now are we the sons of God.